a journalist reveals Bob Lazar's astonishing claims that extraterrestrials see us humans as quote-unquote containers of souls. What if it turns out that mankind is in fact just another animal in a zoo for them? The origin of humanity is perhaps the most significant mystery that the world needs to unravel. In mainstream science, the theory of evolution is proposed to provide an explanation for human biological history. However, not many people subscribe to that theory, and there may be much more to the story that we are not yet aware of. In episode number 2028 of the Joe Rogan podcast, the two current popular figures in the ufology, Jeremy Corbell and George Knapp, discussed the possibility that humans were genetically engineered by a non-human intelligence for nefarious purposes, and some individuals within the government are aware of this. Knapp also mentions that he knows someone high-ranking who told him that human conflict, specifically war, is sometimes intentionally designed by a malevolent non-human intelligence through manipulation. During the podcast, George Knapp discussed Bob Lazar and mentioned that Lazar was told while working on the program, quote-unquote, that humans were viewed by extraterrestrials as containers of souls, quote-unquote, this may sound bizarre and fictional to many people. However, Lazar can be seen saying the exact same thing in his 1989 interviews. These beings conver conveyed information about the capability of affecting the human brain to anesthetize the human body. And this is done without any physical contact from a remote source. For this anesthesia to be accomplished, the brain has to be in a relaxed state similar to that required for hypnosis. If the brain is subject to any external stimulation, like stimulant drugs or loud music, this manipulation of the nervous system is ineffective. These beings said that man was the product of externally corrected evolution. They said that man as a species had been genetically altered 65 times. They referred to humans as containers. Yet I don't know what we're containers of, as I'm sure you know now, you now know it was impossible for me to corroborate the information in the second section. And obviously, if this information is true, the ramifications are far-reaching, and you don't have to be a nuclear physicist to figure that out. In the podcast, Corbell discussed John Lear, who told him that aliens see us like a wine, and our bodies are containers, and our souls are being matured as like a commodity. Moreover, as according to another bizarre theory that's been covered by researchers like Linda Moulton Howe, David Icke, etc., these non-human intelligences or extraterrestrials feed on human energy, human souls. It's my conclusion over many years that reincarnation is a trap. It's not that it does not exist, although I don't think it's quite the same as it's explained. It's a bit more subtle, maybe, but I don't think it's a trap, David Icke said. Whereas Linda Moulton Howe said, the recycling of souls reincarnation is a machinery of this universe. Robert Allen Monroe, 1915 to 1995, was a radio broadcaster executive from Indiana, known for his research into altered consciousness and founding the Monroe Institute. His 1971 book, Journey Out of the Body, popularized the term out-of-body experience. In 1958, Monroe suffered a series of bizarre events, prompting him to seek medical attention, but doctors found him to be healthy. He decided to dedicate his life to studying altered states of consciousness, eventually developing hemispheric synchronization, hemisync, a technology used using biannual beats to harmonize brain hemispheres. The U.S. government took an interest in Monroe's work, and invited him to join a classified project called the Gateway Process, aiming at using his techniques for remote viewing. And according to the declassified files, this program aimed to alter consciousness, allowing participants to access intuitive knowledge and other dimensions, according to the CIA files. During these experiments, participants sat in, dark and, uh, in darkness wearing headphones and reported encountering interdimensional entities. 
According to Robert, subjects would often encounter interdimensional entities. Most frequently, reptilian humanoids were witnessed. Viewers referred to the uncanny creatures as the alligators, quote-unquote, due to their crocodilian features. Curiously, Monroe was already quite familiar with the unsettling breed. During countless expeditions, he observed identical saurian creatures. For over 35 years, he gathered insight about these startling beings. And here's what he uncovered. For millennia, humanity has been controlled and enslaved by nefarious vertebrates known as reptilians, who, were oper who operate within the fourth dimension, invisible to most but those who can perceive beyond our limited spectrum of visible light. These parasitic entities thrive on our spiritual life force, referred to as louche by Monroe, and really uh, and rely on negative, uh, negative and low vibrational energy for their survival. Viewing Earth as a vast farm, they harvest human emotions such as fear, hatred, anxiety, anger, and depression. With intelligence equal to or surpassing that of humans, this elusive lizard-like race considers itself superior to the rulers of mankind. They do sound demonic, don't they? Robert Monroe pursued transcendental endeavors until he passed away in 1995. His beliefs never changed, and he frequently warned of the sinister spirit, the spiritual vampires. Gateway's revolutionary experiments continued throughout the 1980s. There is a case of a British woman named Samantha MacDonald, who claimed that she had been repeatedly abducted by reptilians since her first contact in the 1990s, but on every abduction her memory was wiped by her abductors. In 2014, she was invited to a British talk show named This Morning, where she revealed there were two alien species, the greys and the reptilians, who worked together. She said that when she woke up, there were needle marks, scratches, and bruises on her body. She said, I've asked them what they want with me, and they said they have come to take me and my family. What they were after was my energy and soul essence. I don't know why they keep coming back to me. I think it has to do with my energies as I'm into healing and meditation, she said. Dr. Ellis Silver, an author of the book, Humans Are Not From Earth, A Scientific Evolution of the Evidence, has a strong belief that life on Earth was sparked by aliens thousands of years ago. He said, mankind is supposedly the most highly developed species on the planet, yet is surprisingly unsuited and ill-equipped for Earth's environment harmed by sunlight, a strong dislike for naturally occurring foods, ridiculously high rates of chronic diseases, and more. Ellis strongly believes that Earth is some kind of galactic jail made by aliens to teach humans a behavior lesson. Similarly, in 2019, members of METI, Messaging Extraterrestrial Intelligence, a San Francisco-based research organization, convened in Paris and suggested that we could all be living in a galactic zoo run by aliens. Florence Rollin Curseau, who is the uh, METI director as well as an astrobiologist, explained, this puzzle of why we have not detected extraterrestrial life has been discussed often, he says, but it, it, in his, this workshop's unique focus, many of the talks tackled the controversial explanation first suggested in the 1970s called the Zoo Hypothesis. Medi President Douglas Vakoch weighed in by saying, perhaps extraterrestrials are watching humans on Earth much like we watch animals in a zoo. Medi researcher John Ball presented the Zoo Hypothesis in his 1973 paper. He wrote, extraterrestrial intelligent life may all be almost ubiquitous, and he added, the apparent failure of such life to interact with us may be understood in terms of the hypothesis that they have set us aside as part of a wilderness, wilderness area or a zoo. And he later wrote in another research paper, ETI, that is extraterrestrial intelligence, may be discreetly and inconspicuously watching us but not dabbling. Additionally, former U.S. Army counterintelligence special agent UFO advocate and media personality Louis Elizondo explained his reasoning behind claiming that UFO mysteries have made him sober, his specu somber, his speculative ideas are strange and out of middle 20th century science fiction, 
particularly the so-called zoo hypothesis that appeared in a number of stories at that time, imagining that Earth was essentially a zoo run by space aliens. What if it turns out that there's another species that is even higher on the ladder than we are? Do we need the, spe the social institutions that we have today? Do we need government and religious organizations that we have today? If it turns out that there is something else or someone else that is technologically more advanced, and perhaps from an evolutionary perspective more advanced, have we been wasting our time all this time? Are we doing exactly what we're supposed to be doing? What if it turns out that mankind is in fact just another animal in the zoo? If we saw ourselves as zookeepers before, maybe we're just another exhibit inside the zoo. What would that mean to us? So uh, the writer says, when I say somber or sobering, I mean there's going to come a point in this conversation where we're going to have to do a lot of reconciling with ourselves, whatever that means. From whatever philosophical background you, you have, this is going to impact every single one of us. And I think that's important. Do we find ourselves in a situation where history may have to be rewritten? So that's what I meant, Elizondo said. And this is on Collective Spark by Vicky Verma Hows and Wise. And uh, I personally believe that aliens can take any, the, uh, the demons can take any shape. Aliens, humans, even angels of light, as the Apostle St. Paul warns us of. And that's how the evil one tempted and made Eve fall from grace, from uh, God's commandments. She was mesmerized by his beauty because he transformed himself in an angel of light. They can transform themselves into anything, a rock, a mountain, a car, a human, anything. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support.